Tell me about the revival mm-hmm. contest. I don't know much about it. Well, I need to finish tweeting about it first. Um, so you don't know well, anything about it? No, I, I know about it. Tell Stop me about it. it. It's fifty thousand dollars guaranteed survival reviver. That means if you enter the other one and you're already reviver? out, you can revival. Like we're gonna revive Come you. On. Yeah. Or it's like a country music concert, like a revival. I don't know. Um, anyway, okay. it's two picks a week through the remainder of college football season, starting week five through conference championships. Hundred dollars to buy in, fifty thousand dollars guaranteed. I gotta figure out how many entries I'm gonna get. But right so this, now, this have... is for this is for college football. I thought it was an NFL one. No, they have plenty of NFL. They don't okay. want me to promote NFL. They want me to promote college because I love college and we hate the NFL. Did you forget about that? No, we, hey, the sports book makes a lot of money in the NFL. I love the NFL. Yeah, you guys are. You guys have to be crushing it right now. I'm like, a big we, NFL fan. We did really well this week. Yeah, I bet. You, know, you guys have been crushing for the last three weeks. I guarantee it. Yeah, well, the only problem has been each of the last two Sundays, the same thing happened. We lost a lot of money because Kansas City just won't lose a game no matter what's going on. You know, if they, if they need it to be pass interference, it's pass interference. If they're on defense, it's not oh. pass interference. We can't get Kansas City to lose a game. So we, we've done really well in the morning games the last two weeks, like very, very well. And then in both instances, we gave some money back later in the day. And both times, it was mostly about the Chiefs. Well, I hope the Chiefs lose this weekend. I like the Chargers. I love – Do the Chargers like have anybody playing in that game? Yes, neither did the Rams last week. It was perfect. I, I don't know, but the, the Rams were missing some skill position players – my understanding is the Chargers could be without both of their offensive tackles. That's okay, a big well, problem. We need. I'm more concerned if Justin Herbert's going to play or not. Um, well, that's a big problem, too. There's a lot of what-ifs, okay? okay? Half of San Francisco's banged up. We want to play mm-hmm. them in at least one survivor. Oh, wait, we have to tell everybody what's going on first. You don't want to... You don't want to recap the weekend at all? You want to go straight into that? I don't care. Yeah. But what do you want to recap for? I You love recapping. Do we really... I want our audience to jump in the comments. I want to know how you did. I'd love to get rid of the recap for it. Okay. So you didn't, so you didn't do well, so you don't want to talk I about fine. it. Okay. Well, your, your NFL best bet was the, was the Buccaneers. Yeah, that was terrible. But then I also had, like, some other nice wins. I was with my buddy Jeff, went to Tampa Hard Rock. Won some money there. I hit the NFL machine to get back my Bucks money. So that was kind of nice to actually use the Broncos. Listen, the weekend was fine. It wasn't a Okay, you're right. You're right. The recap segment is terrible. Okay, forget the recap. Let's go. Let's go to Survivor. So I I have one Circus Survivor entry left with a friend of mine that I went to Gonzaga with and I went to West Virginia with. He and I split. West Virginia too? Yeah. We lived together in Morgantown. Oh, he boy. and I, we split this entry, and we used, we used Buffalo, and then we used Houston week two, and we were totally in agreement that we were going to use Cincinnati. And I texted him on Thursday, like 15 minutes before game time, and I was like, I think we should switch this to the Jets, and we did. You're welcome. And they, and they won. Well, I don't think I followed you. I think you know where I got that pick. In fact, I'm the one that gave it to you on this show, but it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways. I had already done my show with Chris, my teammate in the Circa Survivor, yeah. and so, we had already decided on Wednesday morning we were going to use the Jets. So we win, the Jets win, and then I had another entry that had the Bengals. They lost. So now we – how many entries are left? Like 640? It was like 692. Let me uh, look. Close enough. It doesn't matter. And we decided we're going to team up, me and my partner, you and your partner, and we're going to team up. And so now we each just have 25% of both entries. Is that 642. You are right, JM. Oh, great. So is that correct, though? That's the plan. That is correct. P- implied value per entry, $22,000. So you wouldn't be interested in selling it for twenty two because that's yet. that's not a lot of money to you. Not yet. Soon. Okay. But like me, I'm a working guy. My partner is a working guy. He's got a, he's got a daughter. I mean, twenty two thousand dollars to us regular, but it's salt not of the earth people. Twenty two thousand dollars yet. Well, it'd be eleven eleven thousand each. Yeah, if you guys just sold yours and then you're out, so you guys right. could sell yours instead of teaming up with us. No, no, we already decided we, to team up. Yeah, I know. We're but team you up. guys could have done that, but I didn't want to sell one after we decided to team up. Okay. Because then it would not have been eleven thousand dollars each. 
So, well, true. It would have been, yep. Yeah. All right, touche, like $5,500 each. But you don't you don't like the idea of getting $5,500 each. Now you've got your $500 buy in back, and you, you put $5,000 in your pocket, and then you continue with the other entry. $5,000 is not just yet. too insignificant to you? No, not yet. Okay. I, I'm not... I'm not ready to do that yet, no. So let's talk about Sunday. Obviously, all arrows are pointed towards the 49ers. They're on a two-game losing streak. They are at home against New England. They are minus 600 on the money line. That's the highest money line that we've had in the NFL so far this season. They look like a very easy pick to win. And Kelly showed us the schedule. It doesn't really look like there's that many great opportunities to use them again for a while. Right? Uh, isn't it like week 14 they play uh, the Bears? I'm pulling that up right now. So the okay. next time that I think would be an appropriate time to use San Fran would be next week in a divisional huh. game, which I don't like. And then it would be at the end of the season. When do I have them? Was it against like? You said the Bears. Yes. It would be against the Bears or the Rams. Or, well, I don't like to take road teams. So you could do so Seattle. So you're which telling me there's all kinds of opportunities to use them. You can use them against New England. Arizona next yeah. week, divisional game. Don't like that. Dallas, week eight. Don't Dallas. really love that. No. Seattle, another divisional game, week 11. Don't like week, it. Week 14 versus the Bears. They'd be mm. a seven-point favorite. Against the Rams, seven-and-a-half-point favorite. Week 15 or week 17, they'd be five-point favorites to Detroit. So, look, we're, we're going to use San Francisco for one of the entries. The question, there's two questions. Do we use them on both? And if, if the answer is no, we don't, who do we use on the other entry? I had mentioned, hold your nose, the Bengals. No. They go at Carolina this week. Kelly hated it. She vetoed. I didn't, like, I don't, did we make an agreement that we had veto power? Because yeah. I saw I you in the group chat, you're like, I'm against, vetoing. Can you do I that? veto power against... You sound like my partner last week where he's like, all right, we're going to go with the Bengals. And I was like, okay, Jets, Bucks, Browns, Bengals. There's only one right answer, unfortunately, for everybody mm -hmm. involved. And it's like, all right, fine. If the Bengals lose to the Washington football, whatever the fucks, yeah. then so be it. And then they did. I know. And no, I'm I know. Annoyed. Like you were I'm really annoyed I didn't go double jets or triple jets. But you were saying yesterday, and I, I'm not I get where you're coming from, but you were saying yesterday, like, let's just use the 49ers and get to next week. Yeah. And normally I would agree with you, but if you asked me so far this season, what teams were you most sure would win in any game? I would say number one, Baltimore beating the Raiders after they lost to Kansas City after they had 3 extra days to prepare after the Raiders had to go west to east i would say number 1 would be that and number 2 would be the Bengals at home to avoid going to 0 and 3 against the Redskins and a rookie quarterback those were the two games i was like those will win you can get those you can get to next week they both lost so even though, of course, I think the 49ers are going to win on Sunday, they're a minus 600 favorite. I'm just saying the last two weeks I saw, I saw a spot both times where I said, you can just win with this, and they lost both times. Well, That's what 95% of the field has been eliminated. Correct, but here's the issue. So then do you use a small favorite, right? Because we both already used... The second team, which would be the Jets over Denver. Yep. Yep. We've both already used Houston, which is, mm -hmm. you know, seven-point favorite over Jacksonville. Otherwise, you're looking at Kansas City on the road, Dallas on the road, Cincinnati on the road, which I don't like to take road teams. So now we're in the mix of Detroit minus three and a half. Do we need to save them for Thanksgiving? Holy shit, Thanksgiving is like forever away. Mm -hmm. Or Arizona minus three and a half over that same Washington commander's team that yeah is better than advertised or i don't think you worse, chicago l let me give you let me give you my thoughts i don't think you get i don't think you want to use detroit i'll tell you why a detroit always loses on thanksgiving a lesson that kelly and i learned last year but more importantly you've got dallas hosting the giants and on black friday you've got kansas city hosting the raiders so it's not like you need to hang on to the lions i don't think i would probably agree with that that's so, I, I would agree that that's fair i think here's where i think we leave it for now i think we we say that the plan is to use san francisco 
and another team. But if the 49ers injury report comes out on Friday and it's really clean and we don't like anything else, maybe we use 49ers on both. Okay, so let me say this. So Mm -hmm. the NFL teams that are playing this year on Christmas, Kansas City at Pittsburgh, Raven, or excuse me, is it at Pittsburgh? Gosh, I hate how this is. Why do, why do they do this on, on it's, a website? Uh, K- Kansas City's on the road on Christmas. Yeah, at Pittsburgh, Ravens at Texans, right? Mm-hmm. And Seattle at the Bears, right? And then the day after Christmas is Seattle at the Bears. So you have those three options. And so you I, don't, your entry already used Seattle. Yours and Chris. Correct. And the Texans. And the Texans. Oh, geez. So that leaves yeah. us with the Ravens, the Steelers, the Chiefs, the Bears on Christmas. Well, that's, let's. I think to me that's too far forward thinking. I mean, maybe that's dumb to say, but you got to no keep to use Kansas. I don't think you use Kansas City on Thanksgiving. Is all I'm saying. It's like. Oh, well, then maybe you use Dallas. I think Dallas is is it. We'll see what they look like on Thursday night. But let, for this week's purposes, I think we we're gonna go San Francisco on one of the two, and then we'll have to discuss what we do with the other one. Can a home team that's a huge favorite coming off of a loss? Just go out and win a football game? Is that even possible anymore? I don't know. Maybe not. But, you know, San Francisco's a very banged-up team. They got a lot of guys hurt. Just saying. It's not like it's it's not like it's a given that they're going to win. Okay, so as of today, let's look at the last update. Uh, there is no update. Thank you, 49ers website. Um, let's see. This is three days ago. Wow. Okay, five days ago. This is ridiculous. Well, the injury reports come out on Fridays. So that yeah, but make sense. shouldn't we have like an update? Like, in well, the you can. The, the official injury report will be Friday. Right now, but, you can okay. you can go on social media and and glean like so that's what where goes. I'm at right now. So we know that Christian McCaffrey's in Germany. We already heard that rumor this week. Brock Purdy is day to day, and of course, their defensive tackle is out for the rest of the season. John, Who's the uh, uh, Niners' backup quarterback? Hardware. What's that? Who's their backup quarterback? Uh, you should know these things, Kelly. You're telling, good. you're right. You're, te- you're telling me to use right. both of my entries on the Niners. Yeah, because I don't have any faith in the Patriots. That's why it's Brandon Allen, I guess. Oh, or no, they have Joshua Dobbs. Joshua. Dobbs. Oh, Josh Dobbs. Yes, great. So, um, so we're yeah. gonna probably. I, I think at this point, there's a good chance we're gonna use the Niners on both in circa. But what about in splash? Kelly and I have an entry together in the Splash Sports NFL Survivor Contest, which it's hard to be alive in any Survivor Contest right now. That's a guaranteed $1 million prize. I don't. I wouldn't want to use San Francisco in that because you've got all those two-pick weeks at the end of the season, and don't you think we're going to want to have the 49ers available to us? Yes, and there's 728 still alive in that one. So Out of 11, who do you – what are you thinking there? Where I feel like in that contest, because of all the two pick weeks, you've got to be a little bit right. more aggressive. So weeks, weeks twelve through eighteen, you have a two pick week. So basically, yeah. you're using almost every single team. Right. So you uh, exactly. So I think you've got to be a little bit aggressive with maybe. You mentioned the Bears. The Bears are a small favorite. They're at home against the Rams. That could be an option. I mean, you're not going to get to win that many games without using a team like the Bears, like the Falcons, you're going to run out of teams. You, you just you can't use a good team every week in that thing. Unfortunately not. And so I have one personal entry left. You and I have a team entry left. I probably think you're right. It's probably like Cardinals, Bears. Cardinals is uh, a good one. Yeah. I, I do like the Cardinals a lot this week. Uh, that okay. reminds me of like week one versus the Bucks versus yeah. the Commanders on the road. But we'll see. They – Sure looked good on Monday night. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. You do have to be aggressive. So, so far in that, I've taken Tampa Bay, Washington, New York Jets, and then I'll probably take, like, an Arizona this week. And then you and I have taken the Bills, Washington, New York Jets. Okay. What a disaster Monday night's game was for a number of reasons. But not not escaping me, you know, I got Malik Neighbors to win Rookie of the Year at 20-1. to 1. Okay. And he played so good Sunday. I was like, oh, my God, this he's going to be the favorite. And then Jaden Daniels goes out and just plays a masterful game. And the Redskins beat the Bengals on the road. Jaden Daniels is now the favorite at 3-2. to two. Neighbors plus 275. Your quarterback, Caleb Williams, 
is tied with Marvin Harrison Jr. as the third favorite. They're nine to two. Do you want to do college sharp plays? Wait, hold on. Wait. Uh, you want them? Yes. You look really like. What are you doing right now? You're I'm, not paying any I'm, attention at all. I, I know you never pay attention, but you're like paying I even less pay a attention. Lot of attention. My brain is like trying to figure out how the fuck I'm gonna pick double pick weeks and win this splash. Dude, that's <laughs> what I told that's you. That, that that's why we uh, that's why we use the Redskins in week two. You can't just take like in that contest. You can't just go okay. Chiefs, Ravens, 49ers. No, you're going to run out of good teams. You're going to run out of teams. You're by the time you get to December, you're going to be playing like 8-point underdogs. Yeah, you, you have to use you have to use uh what is it? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 7. Time, that's 14. You have to use 26 out of the 32 teams. Wow. You can't do that unless you take teams that are at the bottom of the league. Maybe that's why I know I know our producer John Hoagland's listening to this, but that's why I said maybe Chicago Chicago is actually favored this week. This is the time they're going to be favored. It, it looks like a pretty good spot, and we'll get into it later in the show, but we did take sharp money on the Bears in that game. So that could be a 10. The only other time I'd want to take the Bears would be week 10 against New England. Okay. Well, that's not bad. But they, I will say the Bears do fit a lot of your qualifications. They're at home. Yes. They're not playing a divisional opponent. Correct. And there is sharp money on them. Okay. And I don't think the Bears are a team we'd really miss other than that New England game you mentioned. And I, did, I have them crossed out. I don't want to use them Week 17 Seattle because they're in between a divisional sandwich with Detroit and Green Bay. Week 17 at Seattle? No, I don't want to use that either. They're it's not at terrible. Seattle. They're at home. Oh, at home. I'm sorry. Yeah, I never like – they're at Green Bay to finish the season, but I really don't like those divisional sandwich spots because I feel like it's kind of a flat – you're coming off a divisional opponent and then you go play one and it's like, does this game matter? No. College football talk. Where there's college football, where there's never any upsets, right? No one. Not in our, not in yeah. our splash contest. Well, the, the only part of the whole year was Notre Dame losing to Northern Illinois, and that wasn't offered in the contest. So apparently, no. Because so I, I, I guess the only way you can get knocked out of that contest is well, if you this week. put the wrong team in, like Kelly Shut did. Up. I don't like. Did the favorites ever lose yeah. in college football? When? Who? They lose. Let's look at Ooh. last week. Let's see who let's see how who got eliminated last week and how. Who they picked. That'll be a All fun. Right. Yeah. That'll be fun because sure. I'm genuinely curious. So this week is a two pick week. Uh just in case you guys want to know. So there's still 970 people in ours. So how Andy, many people? Yeah, it's out of like eleven hundred, right? Favorites yeah. don't lose. Let's see who the last people that lost was. I gotta scroll all the way down. Because there's def- there's there's been like almost 300 people that have lost, and yes, two of mine was because I accidentally clipped, clicked UTEP. Because I'm an idiot. Weren't they a huge dog in that game against Nebraska? Yes, I did not. I meant sorry. to click UTSA because I didn't I'm think sorry. I used I'm UTSA sorry. all the rest of the friggin' season. I'm just like scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and I cannot. Oh no, no this is this is really good content. Let it's me run a- through. Let me run through that? the plays. Why sharp plays? But you're not even listening. Yes, I am. I have my pen ready. Okay, we'll start Thursday night. Is that Thursday? Yeah. Nope. Friday night. Sorry. Friday night, Miami, Florida. Miami's been playing great. You know, they're kicking they're killing everybody. They are they've been bet up from 17 to 19 and a half. They're at home against Virginia Tech. Sorry, Peter, my brother. Um Is he a Vod, big Vod Tech guy? He went to Vod Tech. Oh, Syracuse knocked out a handful of people last week. This, there's another game Friday night too. State, there's, there's some... Vanderbilt, Florida State. So you're not paying any attention at all. All right, go ahead and just look through this. State. This is the worst content of the season, I think. You literally said nobody loses. I found people that lost. All right, moving along to Saturday. Sharp action, go. I was going to give you another Friday pick. Oh, please. Uh, Rutgers minus one and a half at home against Washington it was a really sharp play. I also, they played. That, but we saw money come back on the it other did side. Three. At three, it came back. And then there was also sharp money under 46 in that game. That so make sharp. that make sense. You respect both of the of the people who wagered on that game? Yeah. I mean, look, there's, there's a game, and we're going to get into it later in the NFL, where we've had really respected groups on both sides of this one game in the NFL. That's a Monday night game. So okay. what do you do with that information? Maybe you throw it out. I would trust the side in this game that's on Rutgers more personally but I, I know what you're saying 
And, and, and that's usually what you get in college football. You usually have these dueling groups that are playing numbers and they're on either side of these games. Very common. You want to go to Saturday? Yes, please. Saturday, North Carolina plus three at Duke. More of a basketball rivalry there. Colorado plus 15 at Central Florida. Colorado's kind of a fun team. I know it's like I know it's so like in to hate on them, but aren't they really exciting? I mean, I guess last week's game was really exciting. You I guess didn't watch last it, week's game I, was exciting? I was told that like Baylor was like a wire to wire winner and then Shadur just like launches one down and then they go to overtime and win. That was one of the greatest throws I've ever seen. I and didn't he, see it. I just Oh my god. Watching. He he was he was rolling out to his left. And it was ridiculous. Huh. Colorado wins in overtime. I'll give you – well, so the last one so is no, – know... like, I know – It's not that we don't think that they're exciting. We just think their coach is an asshole. Well, be that as it may. A lot of people say that about Bill Belichick. I love Bill Belichick. Um, this, so here's the one that's crashed the most all week. Obviously, if you got to it early, you're in good shape. If not, you're out of luck. UNLV against Fresno State. That number's coming – well, should say Fresno State plus the points against UNLV. UNLV's obviously had major off the field issues. Their quarterback transferring I, for one. I think we have like nine yeah. mailbag questions about how do you just quit in the middle of the season and take a red shirt? Uh, yeah. What do you? I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? Because this guy is not going to be an NFL quarterback, right? And he has an opportunity. Probably not going to be an NFL quarterback. Let's say that. And he has an opportunity here to potentially cash in for a bunch of money. I, so I usually don't like to make like bold statements until I actually have like all the facts. So allegedly a assistant coach told him that there would be a hundred thousand dollars. Is that correct? He would be paid a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who's, I don't know who you're supposed to believe in, but yes, yes. Right. So that's his side of the story. And then you go farther down and you look at his agent who's not registered in the state of Nevada to mm-hmm. make these kind of contractual agreements. Turns out there is no contractual agreement. So I think he got pissed off, found out he wasn't getting paid, and was like, fuck you guys, I'm out. College football has, has, has opened something that can't be put back in the box. Correct. Right now. And it, this, is, this is a very like surprising situation because we've never seen it before. Maybe this becomes the norm. Maybe this becomes the norm after week three, because well, once they play, have you heard any other schools not paying people their promised NIL amounts? But what if, but what if, uh, what if I'm promised this and another school gets in my agent's ear? If you come there, we'll give you twice that much. Right, but that's kind of the thing. Is aren't we saying like you're accepting this money, thus you're staying with us, or is it just going to be a free for all? You transfer every year. I don't know money? enough about it, but it, uh, on the surface, it seems like it's just a complete free for all. Okay. And the, the one thing they are going to need to implement is is contracts, where it's like, okay. But the NCAA is like, we want nothing to do with it. Well, uh, otherwise, it's just going to be this free-for-all every season. I mean, at least if it's like, okay, Kansas State's going to pay me this much money, but i got to be there for three years. You know, there's some organization to it at that point. Right now, it's just like, okay, we'll pay you. Oh, no, we'll pay you more. Come to us next year. It's just a mess. Yeah, but it's not they, great. I mean, when you, I've heard all sorts of crazy stories about, you know, tampering, what's tampering, what's not. We don't even know. I mean, there was there yeah. was rumors about the crappy Colorado State quarterback who can't seem to win a football game. That Casey was allegedly offered to pay him six hundred thousand dollars, and everybody's going, "What are you talking about? What that do you have against the? Kid. What do you got against that kid? You don't like this kid? Well, he lied to get more yeah. money from Colorado State. Why would you lie about oh. my alma mater? Like, bro, we have Avery Johnson. We don't need you." LSU, a school that's been very successful in the NIL market. Look at their pitcher, Paul Skeens, some other football players. They laid 20 and a half and 21. Yeah, They're home against South happy. Alabama. Yeah, LSU could be a team flying under the radar a little bit. The, the SEC is so good right now. Well, it's because it, LSU is just not very good defensively. They can't really yeah. stop anybody. I don't know if I'd want to lay 28 with them, but I did play them this week in Survivor because I don't think that I'm going to use them any other spot throughout the rest of the season. The biggest game of the week, obviously, by far, is Georgia and Alabama. That game is in Tuscaloosa Saturday night. It's always interesting to see Alabama as a home underdog. 
I got well, to tell you. You've never even seen that. Oh, well, in I think that. your career. George Bush was president last time he was it, a home underdog. Didn't it happen when they played Georgia like 15 years ago? I thought I thought they said it happened one other time. And, of yeah, course, it 2007. was Georgia. 2007 or 2000. Was the, okay. Was the last time they were a home underdog. Wow. That's crazy. What, what if, the what, internet's lying to me. I think there was a game. Maybe it was. Maybe it was an Athens. The SEC championship. They've been an underdog. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy to see that. But you know what's really interesting about this game? We don't have much money on it yet. So right now, Georgia That's minus true. Georgia's minus two. I mean, obviously, come Friday, come Saturday, it'll be the biggest game bet game of the week for sure. But for now, the sharp guys who are usually the ones that are poking and prodding around on Mondays and Tuesdays, yeah, I, they're, they're, they're staying away. I, have not, I really want nothing to do with that game. I they're wouldn't be surprised away. to see either team win by double digits. Notre Dame is a six-and-a-half-point favorite in South Bend against Louisville. Notre Dame is now plus 160 to make the playoff after your friend Andy Samuelson. He, his, his week trip last year was to South Bend. I don't know what he's doing this week. But last week his vacation was in South Bend, Indiana. He saw Notre Dame beat Miami of Ohio 28-3. to Very They get Louisville play. on Saturday. You know, outside of Georgia-Alabama, there's not a ton of, like, really marquee matchups. I mean, that one is so good, obviously. But I think we're going to wait into October. That's when we get the Saturdays where we have, like, all these premium. Yeah, like October 12th is going to be yeah, well, absolutely bananas. It is, but October 19th, you've got Tennessee-Alabama and you've got Georgia-Texas. Yeah. No, no, October 12th, you're right. But Georgia, Texas is going to be the 19th in Austin. That's a pretty good game. I mean, the SEC is so top heavy. There's so many great teams, and they're about to start playing each other. It's going to be pretty good stuff. Can you yeah. get me the Hottie three or foursome or potentially yeah. fivesome? There's like eight, eight little okay. tiny dogs. Here's the problem I like one, two, three, four, five, six little dogs. Like mm -hmm. two three point underdogs. Like Mario. Like one, two, big, giant underdogs. Three giant underdogs. Well, what about problem. what about this? Because we are we got to tell everybody we're recording a day early because the hurricane that's bearing down on Kelly. Do you want to wait until tomorrow to release? Well, body threesome because we are a day this. early. I put these up already because I already bet them and my picket account is attached to it. Okay. Already bet Arkansas. Already bet USF. Already bet UAB. Already bet Western Kentucky, already bet North Carolina, already bet Northern Illinois. I like North Carolina. A couple of other dogs I'm looking at. Arizona plus 11 and a half. I don't think Kentucky can win outright, but 17 and a half points is too many. Mm -hmm. And I still need to find a third leg. For what is night. your... What I don't is think Wazoo uh... is going to get... I, a couple of people I really respect, like Boise State, so I've been kind of waiting on that one. And Arkansas what's the chuckle? Uh, what's the chuckle? Rumham play. Uh, Western Kentucky. I think they beat BC. Okay. Even though oh, like Michigan it. State should have beat them last week, but here we are. No, they should have. That was a good call by you. Michigan State was a good call. Uh, womp, womp, womp. So Western Kentucky is the Rumham play of the week. And what's your barking dog? Is that in the NFL? Yeah. It is. Okay. I why don't we? I gave out the uh, Chargers barking dog. Why don't we pivot to the NFL? I don't know how you – like, I'm not even saying that I don't think the Chargers can cover. That's not my point. I just – I don't know how you can bet on that game until you see the injuries. I haven't yet. You just said you gave it out. I did. But I think right now we're going to wait and see the injury report. You should. Listen, here's, here's the reality. I gave it okay. out on a show that we do early in the week. you got to sit back and watch, just like last week with the Rams. I said everybody is – going crazy about these injuries. And then guess what? Come mm -hmm. game time, it's not as bad as everybody makes it out to be in the media. I'm betting more on Harbaugh and his ability to make adjustments and betting against Kansas City and they're not explosive offense. They're winning games by one score, last minute kind of weird things. They don't even use Travis Kelsey anymore. Yeah. I, I just don't see this being a blowout scenario. I think over a touchdown is downright disrespectful. So, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. absolutely going to bet on the Chargers, but you're right. I'm kind of just watching. There's I, there's literally no rush. I used to believe in CLV so much. If I get CLV, almost never wins. If I don't get CLV, 
I'm so happy Western Kentucky moved to 13 instead of 11. I was like, perfect. CLV closing line value for the people at home that are. I don't know if it matters, but it sure doesn't no, fucking feel like it. I just want to make sure for the people at home that aren't like dorky sports betting dorks like Kelly, CLV means closing line value. Sports betting dorks. See, so right, what you want to. Whatever you. What? Give me the NFL place. Whatever you do, you want to beat the closing line. You're going to be better off. NFL. I got a, I got a lot. I got a lot. I got a lot of stuff. I got Atlanta minus one and a half. They are at home against New Orleans. You know, Atlanta probably should have won on Sunday night, right? I mean, yeah, can I, is that okay to say that? Yep. Jacksonville. So here's one. It's been batted around a little bit. They, they bet Houston up from six to seven, and then we had a, a really sharp group come in and take Jacksonville. They took it at plus seven, minus 116. So keep that in mind. Remember, we have minus 108 juice on the NFL, the Superbook. So we at the time, we had Jacksonville plus seven, minus 116. Houston was minus seven even. And they took Jacksonville. I mentioned the idea of using the Bengals in Survivor. Kelly doesn't like it to be nice, and there was some respected play on Carolina at plus five and a half this morning. Okay. They bet Chicago minus two and a half against the Rams. They bet Miami, a pick them. This is Monday night against Kelly's team, Will Levies and the Titans. Oh, God. And, now, and I teased this earlier in the show, but here's one where I saw really sharp money both ways. Groups that I really respect both on, on the Lions, the line got up to five. There was playback at five and at four, and we're at three and a half right now. Lions are hosting Seattle in the second Monday game. So I don't really know what to do with that game right now because I don't – like I mentioned earlier in the show, I like Rutgers. I like the, the group that bet Rutgers more than the support I saw for Washington. That's the Friday night college game. In the NFL, this is, this is both pretty good. So I don't know what to do. I mean, maybe just stay away from that game. Because I, I like I respect both groups a lot that laid in, that weighed in on that game. Kelly, what's Damn your it. best bet? What's your best bet? Well, my best bet is uh, the Cardinals. I told you that already, which oh, is why did. I think I'm going to use them in my splash. If you want to use the Bears, and then yeah. I can at least go down on my own. No, no, I crash. like I like that. I mean, the, I think Cardinals are I think the Cardinals are a really good option in splash too. Because I don't I can't imagine there's going to be a ton of opportunities to use them. So and I'll, look, the only other opportunity I have to use them would be week 15 versus the Patriots. I would have no problem if we use the Cardinals in one of our two circus survivors. Cause Ooh. look, then my would concern, fault if we lost fault, what does that mean? <sighs> Everybody's got to agree, man. Turn your key, Kelly. Everybody's got to turn their key. It's nobody's fault. Uh. I just, my one concern with using the 49ers on both is what if, you use the 49ers on both, and they win, but. What did you do? Just mute yourself? Why are you so bad at this game? That. <laughs> what? I'm just going to do like an outtake segment. John B Murray versus technology. <laughs> I don't even. What happened? <laughs> Somehow you muted yourself. Really? <laughs> no. I can't believe you even noticed. You haven't listened to me the entire show. Yeah, I listen to you. I'm just sometimes multitasking. I've yeah. had a lot of shows to do today. Before oh, I know. Oh, I know. We're not, nothing's even going to happen. I've crammed all these like shows into one day, and then tomorrow it's going to rain for like three hours. I'm like, well, that was stupid. Uh, well, it, it showed in your performance. But the Niners. Whoa. The Niners. Uh, if we use the Niners in both and all the favorites win, it's possible that the value of our entries could actually go down next week. If everyone gets through because it's a chalky week and we don't have the 49ers anymore, the resale yeah, value. Do you really think that the 49ers are some powerhouse team? I don't think they're going to go back to the Super Bowl. We know that well, right now that like their stock is just not as great as it once was a couple of weeks ago. You, you don't think the 49ers have long-term value in a survivor pool? I'm not saying they don't. Okay. I'm saying that I just don't know how great they really are. They're not right? great right now, but it, if you if you operate in a world where eventually they get all these pieces back, they in theory they would be very good at the end of the season. If well, right right now, I know that. 
here's the reality. Okay. They're a top five team, right? Would you say that? Even with I don't, I don't even know about that right now. They have so many guys hurt and out. I mean, okay. probably. Probably. Top seven. Kansas okay. City's in the mix, of course, once again, right? Yeah. Baltimore? I mean, what is Baltimore? Is uh, Baltimore I think ba- any good? I think Baltimore is still one of the elite teams. What I don't understand is, and we saw it on Sunday, why do they take their foot off the gas? Why don't – like, one of the things I always respected about Belichick and the Patriots during their heyday was – they would just keep scoring, and they would win by as many points as they could. And you know what happened? Nobody ever came back on them. Because right. if, they could, if they could get out by 50 points, they would do it. I, Baltimore blew the game against the Raiders two weeks ago. They totally took their foot off the gas on Sunday. They almost lost that game, which would have been catastrophic for them, given their schedule. You know, they play Buffalo on Sunday night football. They've got a trip to Cincinnati looming next week. Imagine if they were 0-3. Are they any good? Cincinnati doesn't look any good. No, Houston is struggling, which we kind of, you and I talked about. Philadelphia? Yeah. What what is Philadelphia's identity? Uh, No, I I get what you're saying, but I just, it's hard for me to. Mid-tier team, the Saints? Are the Saints good? It's hard for me to get there and say that if, if the 49ers, if they get the group back healthy, the key guys, it'd be really difficult to convince me that they're not one of the two best teams in the league. Like we know which teams are not any good, right? We know the giants aren't any good. We know Carolina's yeah. marginal at best with Andy Dalton. Marginal. The Broncos still aren't that good. I don't care what mm. they did on Sunday. New England's not any good. Rams. What do we do with the Rams? I don't well, know. Well, how, how good, are, how good do we think? Good? Uh, I mean, I think the real question is after three weeks, how good do we think Buffalo is? Because boy, well, if they, they look good, looked really good. Uh, boy, they look good. The Are Jets. they the best team in the NFL? I mean, Josh Allen is playing. Josh Allen seems to level up every year, and I know it's been only three weeks, but he, he hasn't been turning the ball over this season. See, and if so he, maybe your entry is worth less because you guys use the Bills Week One. Oh, I think that it is. Oh, I I, I think so too. Because I think Chris and I made a bad business deal. No, I think it is because I think Seattle, even though they're three and zero, they beat. They beat Denver with Nick starting in his first game. They beat the Patriots in overtime. And then they beat Miami with a backup quarterback in Seattle. I'm not convinced that Seattle's that good. I know that they're 3-0. and But, yes, I think Buffalo has more long-term value than Seattle. Of course I do. Okay. You want to do right. the bag? The yeah, mail let's do bag? The, the mail bag. Okay. Trophy husband, 38 on X says, is there any sports betting content you guys have as a must-watch? Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. <sighs> Uh, I if I if I did my homework, I would have eliminated that question. Because you just, are not in charge of picking the questions, and neither am I. Uh, if you have not watched Bet on it on Wager Talk, I would highly recommend it. Uh, Sammy P and Joe O mm-hmm. are pretty funny on BetQL. I'm really enjoying their new show. Let's see. Yeah, I Mitch don't know. Moss and Pauly Howard. Yeah, Mitch, but I never listened to them because they were always like. At the ass crack at dawn. And yeah, I but now they're, they, they they're at like so four. They're much more than sports gambling. Well, they're at like four they, Eastern now. Mitch and Paul. I know. And what am I doing? It's five o'clock, almost yeah. six o'clock Eastern, and I'm still working, John Murray. So you don't you don't support Mitch and Paul? I love Mitch and Paul, but I don't have time to listen to their show. You know, I, don't I can't. Have time to do a lot of things. I can't say Matt Humans. I love Matt. I, I know, so do I, but he has been so critical of this program yeah, well. that I can't. I can't say Matt Humans. And I've listened to Matt for a long time. I adore Matt. I, I, yeah, Matt's a good but, guy. But no, you know, I'm not going to give Matt anything. He did not say we were critically acclaimed. I don't know. I don't watch. I don't watch any of it. You know what I've been watching uh, the, la- the last couple of days? I've been watching that Menendez thing on Netflix. Ooh. You see that yet? No. I remember Whoa. when it happened. Brett was watching yeah. Lacey Peterson yesterday. And I was like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, "This happened, and this happened, and this happened." And he's yeah. like, "Stop! You've already watched this." I go, "No, I lived this. I remember when this happened, and I was like glued to the TV." I don't really. High can I tell you? I don't really remember the Menendez case. The only, the only thing I remember you is killed their parents. Well, I know, I know that, but I don't remember the trial itself. Oh my god, I, I do. I just the only thing I remember is remember that SNL bit with Robbie Schneider played one of the Menendez brothers, and he's wearing a pastel sweater. No. I remember laughing at that. No, I, remember, I don't remember that. I like I, I like say, Robbie Schneider. I started watching The Righteous Gemstones the other oh, day. Oh, that's great. But I'd that, never seen it before. And that show's great. 
I had had somebody recommend it and I was like, oh, this is good to like fall asleep to. And now I have no idea what the hell's going on because I keep going in and out of episode four, keep falling asleep every single night. I'm glad that you're actually watching something other than sports. Yeah. All right. Matt O'Malley, six on X says, we asked the college shop. We asked the college sharps if they are Wyoming alumni. No shit. Oh no, man. Last and and you know, I got the same little card every week. I send to my friends. I said, "This is from the show," and so then always my, Wyoming. Last week, someone was like, "A oh, fucking jam in Wyoming." Like, by the way, the card last week was like really good. Did I rip it off? I did rip it off, but it was really good. And I Great. didn't play Wyoming, and it was really funny because Joe was like, "Fucking Wyoming!" I was like, "What are you talking? Why would you bet Wyoming?" He was like, "It was on the card," and I was like, "Oh, well, at least I was d- not dumb enough to do that." And he goes, "Kelly yeah, was on the card." I go, "Uh, uh-uh. I, I'm 0 and 2 with Wyoming. They are on yeah. the do not bet list right now." They keep. They were betting them, and they were a team that we expected to be a lot better than this. To be honest, can't be right about them all. But this week, I can tell you, we had a respected group came in, Air Force minus three. Air Force will be in Laramie on Saturday night. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about Wyoming. They, they've they had a horrible season. I mean, to put it nicely, disaster. disaster. Jay Herzl on X says, is it time for UNLV to give up on sports? No, it's not. Look, you, UNLV. I asked me this earlier. Does UNLV have any money? They must have money. You would think. So why can't you pay this kid $100,000 to stay? Don't you think that sets a bad precedent if he walks into the coach's office and says, I want another 100000 you go, here you another. go. another. The 100000 that was originally promised. Well, that's, that's his story. Correct. That's, that's his side of the story, which might be true, by the way. I'm not picking sides. I'm just saying that's his side of the story. Know. We don't know if that's true. UNLV sports are on the – they're they're coming up, man. You, I'm going to UNLV Syracuse on October 4th. Okay. It'll be fun. All right. Next Bonilla question. underscore Derek. Bengals can't go 0 and 4, right? Yes, they can, Derek, because I said the Bengals I can't go 0 and 3, three, right? And they are. So yeah, they could go. I mean, look, there's the the Did NFL. You see the, this... the Joe Burrow, Ellen DeGeneres comparison. They're like, <laughs> as long as Joe Burrow keeps dressing like Ellen DeGeneres, he's never gonna win a football game. Hey, I die. Hey, so we, we can make our jokes, and he does look ridiculous. But the Bengals offense scored like every time they had the ball. I think, I think they they said well, it was the first game. The Washington football. Secondary, of course. Yeah. Well, there's the, Swiss cheese. You can't blame Joe Burrow for that game. The Redskins scored every, or they scored or every yeah, time they, they had the punt. football. The punt. Bengals could not get them off the field literally the entire game. So, even though I think Joe Burrow looks ridiculous, I can't blame him for Monday night. All right, at Golden Domer 01 on X says, can John explain his career path that led him to his position? Now, was it a random move to Vegas? And climbing the ladder at a sports book or something different? Is he talking about my job here at the Westgate or the show with you? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and guess the, the one that pays you a salary. <laughs> here at the Westgate, I, I started as a ticket writer. I was a ticket. So, okay, so you and Jeff are living in Jeff. West Virginia. What? Well, we moved back to Virginia after college. Oh, you I did? You didn't to... move straight to Vegas? No, we were. I mean, I was in Virginia for like a matter of a couple of months before I moved out here. But yes, and then so yeah. You have your little piece of paper that says I graduated from college, and you go, I want to move to Las Vegas and mm-hmm. be a bookie, and work at a sports. Well, I mean, now we're getting. I kind of just wanted to move to Las Vegas for a number of reasons, and I figured okay. I might as well get a job. Because Jeff was saying that last night, he was like, I really wish Jeff. I would have moved with what? Oh, he he's just what are you saying? saying he's just saying that. Okay, he's got he's got a wife, he's got a daughter. He he doesn't really mean that. He might have he, meant it. Well, anyways, I, I was a ticket writer here. I was a ticket writer here the night that the Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl, the first one. Yeah. And then I, and then I got, that you know, they kept. first Super Bowl in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. And then I got, I was uh, fortunate enough to be promoted a few times. But it's like any other job, though. You got to get in. You got to work hard. I mean, look at some of these guys we have working here now. These young guys are great. You got to get in. You got to work hard. Yeah. And you can move up. Some of them are all right. Who, who do you consider to be below all right? Babakitas? I'm just teasing. Okay. Chase is doing a wonderful job, except for Chase is good, man. He's a good. He's a fine young man. That the Jacksonville Jaguars would be their your biggest need. Is that what he said was our biggest need Sunday? Well, I text both of you, and he's the only one that responded. So, either he lied or you. We could have used Atlanta. 
We could. I mean, I'll tell you right I now. We could use Atlanta. I said Sunday. No, Atlanta. You, you, you. Guys oh, you mean it. Monday night? Oh, Monday night it Monday was night, Jacksonville. Oh, he's right. Yeah. He's yeah. Right. Okay. Next question. So John Murray, ticket writer, risk room, Jay Cornegay protege. Yeah, sure. Just keep, uh, just keep getting promoted. You know, that's what this country's all about: failing upwards. I mean, look at falling, falling uh, upwards. Oh, is it falling? Well, look at uh, look Wait, at some you, of you your. What do you mean? Am I a prime example? Of no, no, I was gonna say, look at some of your favorite politicians. Man, your I people. could get on some of those stock tips though, for real. All right, bets bald on X wants to know: Has the NFL become a trash league? Will the largest favorite lose outright this week? Become. I knew you were gonna say that. I don't think the NFL. Look, I mean, obviously, the NFL is great for business. I still follow it closely. I love football, love football. But the product right now is not great. There's there's a lot of bad quarterback play. There's a lot of bonehead coaching decisions. The referees get way too involved. They make the game about themselves. I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, look, I love I, – I grew up loving football. It's probably my favorite sport. But the – the NFL is right now. I don't think it's the best product it's been because they got these refs got to stay out of the game, and the these refs get involved in every single sport. Yeah, Why they do. So much more no, they prominent do. In no, NFL. it's look. It's but becoming they make a, bad calls in college too. They make bad calls in college I basketball. Know. They make umpires make bad calls in Major League Baseball. I mean, it's refs in general. But why is it so much more prevalent in the NFL? I think in the NFL it's because great. it's always it's like a it's always like a ninety nine year old guy and he's he's made a call and then he's got to go look at a little screen to confirm or deny his own decision and it's just like what the fuck are we doing can we just play football what is okay. this what right. is this okay all right so we did a show a day early so I won't have to talk to you for eight days I uh, no you have to talk with me and CT tomorrow about what we're going to do in Circus Survivor. We got to talk about that, and then we got to figure out. But I already have in. We're using the Chicago Bears in Splash. That way I can be mad at John Hoagland if his team does not win on Sunday. I like that quarterback for the Bears, Caleb Williams. Seems oh, like a fine you do. He's, he's done such a terrific seems job like, so far. Seems I like can't a fine wait for young him man. to throw two interceptions because I used him in Survivor with you. I like Caleb Williams. 